Let's play a game, shall we? Imagine this. You suffer from seasonal hay fever lasting from April to September. You deal with common symptoms like sneezing, itchy eyes, a scratchy throat, and fatigue. Sound familiar? Now, here are the rules of the game. You'll choose between two options, A and B. Each time, pick the one you prefer, and we'll adjust the probabilities to see how much risk you're willing to take. If you reach a point where you value both options the same, hit the I'm indifferent button and we'll know exactly where you stand. The stakes? Well, they're quite high. We're talking about altering the probability of immediate death. Our goal is to find the point of indifference, the exact point where you value a treatment that cures your hay fever but comes with a risk of death equal to living with hay fever forever. Let's dive into the game. First, imagine a 49% chance of dying from a miracle treatment that has a 51% chance of curing your hay fever. Hay fever is annoying, right? But are you really willing to risk a coin toss where heads you're cured and tails you're dead? Probably not. So you pick option A. Next, what if I offer you a 59% chance of being cured? Tempting, but still a 40% chance of death? You kindly decline the offer. After you reject another high risk trade, I present you with a tempting promise. An 89% chance of being cured and hay fever free for life. Now we're talking, right? Waking up symptom free on a bright spring morning, being able to fearlessly step outside, not having to worry about a minefield of invisible pollen bombs. But is it really worth risking an 11% chance of dying? Probably not. So with some reluctance, you pick option A again. How about this? A 99% chance of being cured for life. Only a 1% risk of death. Sounds like a no-brainer, right? So you press ahead with option B. You continue to play this game for several more rounds and eventually you reach a point where you're indifferent between option A and B. Let's say you're willing to accept a 6% risk of death for a cure. You press the yellow button and the game ends. So what did we learn from all of this? The game's over, but let's take a step back. Based on the choices you made, we can derive a utility value for the hay fever health state, 0.94 to be precise. Now, why does this matter? Because in cost-effectiveness analysis, we need to assign numerical values to health states to quantify the quality of life associated with that health state. For example, if a hay fever wonder drug hits the market, we we'll want to assess whether the cost is justified compared to existing treatments that only reduce symptoms. That's where cost effectiveness models come in and understanding health state utilities, like the one we've just calculated today, is one of the key model inputs that we need for doing just that. If you want to see how this all comes together in practice, then check out my Excel tutorial where I walk you through a simple model building exercise of developing a Markov model yourself. If you haven't seen that just yet, then that's a perfect next step.